Hello, I'm Adrian. Today I'm talking about the track Bombora, which is a 1963 surf instrumental from the Australian band The Atlantics. And I don't usually play through the entire track at the start of my videos, just in the interests of keeping things reasonably concise, but I thought I'd indulge myself today just because this is such a fun track to play. So Bombora apparently is an Aboriginal word for a submerged reef and the kind of dangerous waves that form over such a reef. So did not know that. Uh, there you go. You come here to learn guitar, you end up increasing your vocabulary and your word power. So what other YouTube guitar channels can you say that about? Now this track was quite a big hit in Australia and amongst surf music aficionados this is regarded as a real classic of the genre. Quite how well known it is outside those circles I'm not sure but um, it's certainly a great track and if you don't know it I, I strongly urge you to check out the original recording. Uh, I think this is probably one of my favourite surf instrumental tracks and there's loads of interesting stuff going on here. There's a great guitar performance from a man called I think Jim Skia Thetis. I hope I'm saying that right, Jim Skia Thetis. And uh, it's an amazing performance. Lots of interesting stuff going on melodically and harmonically in this track. Loads of great riffs. Also, I think it's a slyly kind of experimental track. There's that kind of noisy reverb stuff. Great use of dissonance as well. So I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to take you through how to play the track bit by bit. Also going to talk a little bit about my setup today and how to get some of those wonderful surf guitar tones. So let's get on with it. Now I'm going to try not to go into too much theoretical detail in this video. I'm going to try and stick to the fun stuff and the riffs. Suffice to say that this tune is quite an interesting one from a theoretical standpoint. Harmonically and as far as the note choice of the lead guitar part goes it's quite interesting. And like a lot of surf stuff actually it's quite hard to pin down the tonality of this tune. I mean you could describe it as being in the key of a, but it's not really stable in that key center. We've got some mixing of major and minor. We've got sections of the song which, or the, the piece which appear to be in D minor. And then to my ears, we've got some kind of Phrygian or Phrygian dominant kind of sound. So it's all quite interesting stuff. I'm gonna write down the chord progression in my tab of this piece. So if you're interested in exploring that further, then you might wanna take a look at that and do your own theoretical analysis. But uh, for now, let's just get to the riffs. And let's kick off with this great kind of atmospheric sound effect stuff that we've got at the start of the piece. All of this. And basically what we're doing is we're just muting all of the strings and then we've got these kind of 16th note rhythms with the reverb cranked up really, really high. And I suppose that uh, reproduces the sound of waves crashing or something like that. So. Basically, I'm just holding my fingers lightly over all of the strings, maybe using my thumb as well, so that all of the strings are dead. And then with my picking hand, we've just got these quite fast 16th note rhythms. So... Something like that. And if you want, you can kind of move your fretting hand up and down the fretboard. Sometimes I think you can just lightly press down some of the notes and get some more muted note kind of sounds. So play around with that until you kind of reproduce the kind of sound you're hearing on the record. The important thing there is just to crank up the reverb, I think. Second part of the intro, and we've got this really nice dissonant stuff played really high up the neck on the B and high E strings. So what's going on here is that we've got a kind of unison bend effect. So I'm playing an A note at the 17th fret on the top string, and then I'm playing this G sharp, which is at the 21st fret on the B, and I'm bending that G sharp up to an A. So the notes match on the top two strings. And you're getting that nice dissonant effect as the two notes come close to one another and the frequencies are kind of fighting it out with one another. So playing both of those strings simultaneously and also giving it a bit of vibrato, either finger vibrato or better I think for this track would be to give it some whammy vibrato. So it's a really great sound. Unusually, I think, for these unison bends, usually you would uh, be bending a G up to an A, so you've got a tone bend on the B string. 
but in the case of this track I think the two fingers are actually one fret further apart and you're just bending up a semitone. Uh, I think that's an important detail if you want to reproduce that sound exactly. Let's move on to the main riff of the piece then and we're staying high up the neck and the main riff goes like this. So up here again at the 17th fret and we're starting off by just going between the B and the high E strings. The notes here are E and A. Then we're onto the B string and then over onto the G string we've got a resolving to a D note here. So. Now the most challenging technical thing in this whole piece is I think those very fast picked notes that you can hear in this riff. We've actually got an eighth note and then two fast sixteenths and then another eighth note. So we're playing those on this G note here which is the 20th fret on the B string and we've got that kind of thing happening with the pick. So I'm picking this with a down stroke and then a quick down up down. It's that kind of rhythm, da 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 da. Now for most of this piece I'm playing it all with downstrokes. It's just those fast notes that you're going to need to use some quite fast alternate picking. And quite hard to pull off and to stay clean on that I think. So you're going to need to have good picking technique. You're going to need to stay nice and relaxed. So that's the main theme that we're dealing with here. We're then going to repeat that but we're going to go up to the high E string so the melody is just slightly changed there. Then we go back to the original melody and then we're resolving it like this. Coming down to that A note there, 17th, uh, sorry, 19th fret on the, the D string. So that's our main riff. I'll play that for you slowly. Throughout that you can add in some whammy vibrato as well. I think that on the video footage I've seen he's holding on to the whammy the whole time and, and giving it some whammy throughout. I actually find that quite hard to main, maintain control over my picking and hold on to the whammy bar so I'm generally just grabbing the whammy bar at the end of the phrase. If you can pull it off whilst holding on to the whammy bar I think that sounds a bit more authentic. Next riff then and really this is just the main riff played two octaves lower so we're playing it in and around the second position. <laughs> are exactly the same as those that we had high up the neck so we've got an E and an A this time at the second fret on the D and G. We've got an open G string here and over onto the D string we repeat that but go higher so up to the fifth fret on the G here and then resolving like this. So we've got E, E and then we've got 5th and 4th frets on the A string and then 5th fret on the low E. I did check the fingerings of this riff and of all of the other riffs in this piece by looking at some live footage so I think I've got things correct there because there are some 
options here as to where you play some of these notes. You could play some of these riffs using more open strings or fretting the notes on a different string. So this part, for instance, you could have played with an open D and an open A string, but I don't think that's the way it's played on the record. You're playing those two notes at the fifth fret. Just subtly different feel and different tone if you do it like that, I think. Next riff then, I'm going to call this riff B. If we call the first riff, riff A, play that down an octave, that's A2. This is riff B. This one's quite nice and simple. It's nice and melodic. It sounds like this. going to take you through the notes involved here. You do know your notes on the fretboard I'm hoping. Uh, so we're starting off with an A note here on the G string. We've got A, D and then E, F, E, D. And we're coming over onto the G string. We've got C, A sharp, A. And then we're coming down to an E, skipping over to this A note here on the low E string and then an open low E. kind of outlining the chords really nicely in this section of the song. We've got D minor here and then we're kind of coming down the notes in an A chord which is where the harmony is going next. And then we've got kind of an answering phrase to that which goes like this. It starts off the same but then we've got C sharp, D, E. Then the next phrase is quite similar. We've got... But we're going to end differently. So we're going to go E, B, G sharp, E. And again, this is outlining the chords. The harmony is now E, and we're really coming down an E major arpeggio. And then we're finishing off this section of the piece like this. So we've got A, D, up to here to F and E, and then we've got a high A, and then jumping down an octave. Again, you want to be giving that plenty of vibrato, uh, preferably with the whammy bar on this section. We've got one more riff to go and that's the riff that goes like this. And again this one's fairly straightforward to play. It's all played in the fifth position but we're kicking off with the open A string. Playing that a couple of times then we're up to this A note here, an octave higher. This is the seventh fret on the D string. And we have this little melody. A, G, F, G, F, E, D, E. Then we're back to the G. And then over onto the A string. We've got G, 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 F, E, F, E, open A, and then D. And then we finish with E, G, F, E, D. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave you to piece all of this together. All of these sections are repeated at various points during the track, sometimes with some slight variations, but mostly it's pretty similar. I think the main variation you find is in the middle of the tune where 
there's more of this dissonant stuff and that's just getting a little bit busier so we're Exactly the same notes and the same technique. We're just going between that pair of notes, between the B and the high E strings, and getting a little bit busier rhythmically. Uh, likewise, in the, uh, the scratchy sections, there are some variations there, and towards the end of the tune, it gets a little bit busier. Okay, let's talk a little bit about my setup today. And as usual, I'm trying to get as close as I can to the sound on the record using the gear that I've got at my disposal. And I've actually got some nice gear that I'm using today. So I don't know exactly what uh, Jim Skiathetis would have used on the original recording. I think guitar wise it's very likely that he used a Strat, certainly in the pictures and in the live videos he seems to be using a Strat. So that's what I'm using today and this is a, uh, a reasonably new Fender Strat. I think it's a, an American original Strat, I think that's what they call it these days, but it's a, a 60s reissue Strat. And uh, important thing with the Strat is you need to get the whammy bar in there. Often when I use a Strat, I don't use the whammy bar, but this is essential for the surf stuff. And also essential that you've got the bridge so it's set up floating. Uh, in the past with Strats, I've had the bridge set so it's kind of hard tail and flat against the body, but you really need to have it going up and down if you want to get that nice kind of surf sound. Another thing I noticed watching the live videos is how much he's playing around with the pickup selector when he's playing this song. And I think this is a really key thing to getting some of the tones on this record. And uh, it seems to me that he's on the bridge pickup some of the time, uh, certainly when he's doing the, the scratchy stuff and uh, when he's playing the uh, that riff. And then for the other riffs, the main riffs, he seems to be on the middle pickup. So certainly experiment with that pickup selector to get uh, more of a wide range of tones. Now you think of surf guitar and you think of reverb and in particular spring reverb. And that's the key part of this sound. I've been listening to a lot of surf music lately and I've been frustrated that I couldn't really get close to those authentic surf sounds that I was hearing on the records. And I wasn't exactly sure why, because I've got a lot of nice gear. I've got a ton of different reverb pedals. I've got a couple of really nice amps with built-in spring reverb, but nothing was really cutting it for authentic surf sounds. So did a little bit of research, and uh, if you're knowledgeable about surf guitar, then you probably know this already, but a lot of those classic surf records were made using a Fender outboard reverb unit. I think this is called a, a 6G15 reverb unit and it's an outboard spring reverb and that really is the, the key part to getting this sound and uh, there are lots of emulations of that and digital recreations of this in pedal form but n none of that stuff really seemed to do it for me so um, obviously went on eBay looked on reverb.com I actually got reverb.com open right now looking for an original one of these Fender reverb units and uh, there's one available here um, £1,739.66 um, with £238.70 shipping as well. So uh, even though I'm now quite a big deal on YouTube, that's obviously beyond my means. So I uh, had to look elsewhere. Anyway, all of this has led me to get hold of one of these, which is a Surfy Bear Spring Reverb pedal from a company called Surfy Industries. And actually to call it a pedal doesn't really do it justice because it's a full size spring reverb tank in, in quite a big pedal enclosure. It's got a foot switch but it's really just a standalone reverb unit and I have to say that this thing really nails those 60s reverb tones like nothing else I've heard. As I said I've got a lot of other reverb options but they all just seemed a little bit too polite for getting those classic surf tones and this really gets those kind of wild out of control reverb sounds that you hear on records like Bombora. And as far as I know, it's just a reproduction of that original Fender outboard reverb unit. I don't think it's got any valves inside, but in every other respect, it's quite a faithful recreation of that original Fender unit. So that's the reverb using a couple of other pedals. Even though this is quite a clean guitar sound, I very rarely use totally clean guitar sound. So I'm using a little bit of overdrive from my, my usual overdrive pedal, which is a J Rocket Designs Archer pedal. And also using a little bit of delay from a Catlin Bread Belle Epoque Deluxe pedal. I think if you listen to the recording, you can definitely hear some delay on it. It sounds like a kind of multi-tap 
delay, probably a tape delay with multiple heads on it. I couldn't quite reproduce that, but I think the Belle Epoque Deluxe sounds pretty good on this one. I've got that one sort of tucked in a little bit. It's not a very obvious delay, but it's there kind of subliminally. And then amp wise today, I'm using my Vox AC30, which is my usual amp these days. It's a reissue AC30 with blue speakers, just going into the normal channel of that amp and running it very clean. That's it for today. This is a really fun track to play. I really enjoyed learning this one myself and I hope that you do too. There's going to be a tab and a backing track up on my Patreon page. Spent quite a lot of time this week trying to get the backing track and the tab exactly right. So if you're interested, do check that out. I'll be back next week with something completely different. Not quite sure what that's going to be yet, but tune in to find out. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.